Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Feed My Sheep Earthquake Reports and More. It is the 16th. Uh, tried to do a program yesterday, a couple of programs yesterday, but uh, we had some upload issues, so uh, we're going to try again this, uh, well, this afternoon early. And uh, we're going to begin with a look back in Iraq and finish off the New Madrid um, program that we did earlier. Um, so this information is a few days old, but uh, for people that are looking at uh, seismology with interest, uh, this is a good, uh, a good earthquake to look at because it uh, has an unusual number of unusual aspects. And uh, it's quite different from what the experts are reporting. So we'll begin with a prayer um, because all of our programs are um, dedicated to our Heavenly Father service. Heavenly Father, thank you um, that we are still able to communicate. We've had such uh, incredible weather in BC, um, taking a lot, out a lot of communication systems, taking out highways and roads. Um, we thank you that uh, we have remained protected through all of this. There's um, so many things that are happening around the world, um, double-fenced uh, electrical enclosures, um, different areas of, of uh, extreme lockdowns, um, removal of freedoms, and we thank you that we continue to um, rest under your wings. Um, we remain vigilant, and you continue to uh, show us new information all the time about what is going on, and you prepare your children. Uh, you do nothing without warning us through your prophets, not the false prophets, but through your prophets and the prophets and dreamers um, in these days. For it is, as you said, that the old men will have dreams and the young men will have visions. Thank you, Jesus, for shepherding us and leading us where we need to look um, and providing that understanding that we need through Holy Spirit, um, through discernment, we appreciate all of this. In Jesus' name, amen. And so we're beginning in Iran, southern Iran earthquake. We're looking from Garni, Armenia. And here we see an event that uh, began here. We're looking at one to three, about three and a half hours of uh, total duration. So that gives us an initial indication of size. We also see that there was a VLF wave in Garni. There was actually um, VLF waves before this as well. So Garni Armenia had been shifting, having major fault shifts. Um, this is the P wave portion right here because we're fairly close to the site. We'll see this stretch out over time. Um, we also see that there's quite a few breaks through the signal. So that's the first indication that this is a multitude of earthquakes, a series event of earthquakes. But we have no indication, other than uh, duration of the earthquake, we have no indication of size. Now the total duration tells us um, at three and a half hours, tells us that this is under a 7.5 and it's over, uh, over a 7. So that's what the duration fits. Ankara, Turkey, another near site. Now, it all, Ankara, Turkey is a very, very busy site. There's a lot of faults um, in Ankara. There's a lot of volcanic areas, very active. And we see this vibrational um, activity with breaks in between like this commonly. This, this is a daily occurrence uh, pretty much every day from Ankara, Turkey. So we're not worried about that. Um, here we have the propagated signal from southern Iran, which we know was a number of events. Um, I looked at the, uh, at the chart um, provided by USGS, the, uh, the earthquake map, and they said 6.2 and a 6.0, and then uh, a number of earthquakes that were uh, in the high 4 range. Um, but there were uh, larger earthquakes and more of them. So it, it listed, um, I think, 12 the last um, when I looked uh, a day later. 
So the uh, total cluster of earthquakes, aftershocks involved, had uh, maxed out at 12. We know that's not the truth from looking at this signal. Not this signal, but the ones coming up. So let's see what we actually had. We had good propagation to Fairbanks, Alaska. So we've got one, two, three, four, five sets of uh, S waves, the large waveform periods we can, that we can see here. We also see that there was four aspects of deep earthquakes leading into this, or smaller, smaller and deep. So we've got a very deep signal here. That one's about 400 kilometers, this one here, for it to have this kind of width um, or um, gaps in the signal, sorry, the width of the gaps between the signals, this has to be a very deep portion. And uh, this is also deep here. These aren't exceptionally large, but they're very deep. When the signal has to come up through the crust, it also dampens the size of the signal. So we also see some shading. For those that have a larger screen, there's a shading that occurs between here and here, and that's another earthquake happening inside this signal. So there are earthquakes on top of earthquakes hiding within this signal. The Fairbanks, Alaska is therefore not the best angle of view to use for looking at the earthquake. The progression of earthquakes was towards Fairbanks, Alaska, or a lot of them were. So if we look from Casey, Antarctica, now we're south the um, Iran earthquakes, of course, happened north of the equator, and now we're down at the South Pole, or Antarctica at least, and the signal is much smaller than Fairbanks, and that makes sense, because we're much further away. We can see the P wave is really stretched out, and uh, we get into the larger signals here, and now we're getting some uh, a different degree of separation. We see one, two, three, four, this uh, large complex waveform, multiple earthquakes involved, but we see more earthquakes than we saw from Fairbanks. But we still don't have the best angle of view. Looking at uh, Kiev, Ukraine, we see that early deep earthquake. And this is what I was talking about. There's a very deep earthquake involved in this. We can see that quite clearly here. We just can't see where it stops and where it starts. We can see that it starts about in here, but we've got some overlap. And we've got some increased shading in this area, indicating that there's uh, combined earthquake activity and waveforms from this one and this one. So we, uh, we can't tell how many, but we already know that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we've got uh, about 15 earthquakes showing just in that signal. S-wave earthquakes. And here we're looking at the Kansas State University from Kansas Prairie, Kansas, USA. Why? Because it, uh, being further away, we see better separation of the signal. Still not the best site for showing separation, but here we have um, the initial deep earthquake. We've got a, um, some of it hidden in here um, of a previous signal, but this is a separate signal here. And this, by the way, is, uh, is about four minutes in duration. And uh, so we're looking at one S wave there, another S wave there. These are independent earthquakes, a smaller earthquake in between right here, shorter in duration, another one here, another one here. This is another one also, and this is another one. We're getting signal separation by heading south and um, a distance away, uh, east, sorry, south from um, Alaska by comparison, just changing our angle of view. When we go down to Amarillo, Texas, we're moving further south, and now we see that first signal actually had two signals in it. So we've got uh, a deep signal here, a less deep signal here, there's another one here. So we know that there's a couple of signals in there. And we've got some shading in, so we've got earthquakes still hiding underneath here because we can see the overlap of that causes a shading effect. And for duration, we're still looking at one, two, three, three and a half hours, roughly. So now we're looking at the South Pole Remote Observatory and look at how many signals we actually have. Here's the P wave stretched right out all the way from here. Going through here, here's the first deep 
signal, small deep signal. This is the second deep signal. And this is uh, almost four minutes in duration. We've got another one here. We've got another one here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. There's one hidden inside, that's seven. There's another one hidden there, that's eight. Nine for this one that extends beyond, 10, 11. There's 12, there's 13, there's one hidden inside, that's 14. This is the 15th S-wave signal right here. This is the 16th S-wave signal. Now we're still over 5.0 for it to propagate this large of a signal um, all the way to the South Pole Remote Observatory. We've crossed the um, equator from the northern hemisphere. We're all the way down to the South Pole, and we still have this large of a signal. Um, so these are. This one is actually in the uh, in the 5.3, 5.4 um, is or even even 5.5, 5.6. This is not the 4.6 that they're talking about. This is a magnitude higher. All of these earthquakes are basically a magnitude higher than what are reported. So we were 17 there. We've got 18, 19, 20, 21. We've got 22 earthquakes that we're seeing there. And then this is a 23rd one over here. And now this one is getting down to the 5 range. For this distance away, for propagation, now we're in the 5 range. We've got 20 earthquakes that were 5.0 and greater and the largest ones were in the 7.2 range. How do we know this? By the total dura by the duration of the signal and the size of propagation. We've got a longer signal here, um, just about four minutes. We've got a longer, longer, larger, sharper signal here. And that's an independent signal. We can measure it from here to here. We have um, just, we've got uh, about a three and a half minute signal. This one's about three and three quarters minutes, a little longer. Um, so we've got some large, short earthquakes. Um, when I say short, they're not in the five minute range, but they're uh, approaching four minutes. And we've got three and a half minutes, or I mean, sorry, three and a half hours of total duration for multiple sites. And that fits with a 7.2. So we've got a very deep, there were two very deep 7.2 earthquakes, or one very deep uh, 7.2 rather, and uh, then a more shallow 7.2. So there was two 7.2s. And uh, there was in total um, 20 other earthquakes besides that. So they were grossly underreporting the number. They basically got it down by almost half. Um, so a 7.2 series event earthquake. That's what we actually had in Iran. Um, and that's how they hide the significance of the activity. Take a full magnitude off of everything, and that's what you've done. The Wichita Mountains site. Now we're going to Oklahoma, and this is showing the third major VLF shift in three days. In Wichita, I haven't seen move with VLF waves before the last, uh, the last four days. All right, so this is a new fall fault movement in Oklahoma. And that's uh, when it's off the chart and VLF size, it's significant. Now, uh, finishing off what was going on in the New Madrid. And yes, this is a few days old, but it's still pertinent. Um, this is from ARP, Tennessee. This is half the activity. In ARP, there was an hour uh, or so of this activity leading into this seismogram. I just didn't want to show two seismograms for the activity. Basically, uh, twice what you see there. Bay Village, Arkansas was also very busy. Riverdale showed an increase. Riverdale, Arkansas. This is actually normal for Truman. It's this level of activity in Truman, Arkansas, pretty much every day. And this is near daily normal activity in Guam, Missouri. Okay, so Guam is also very active. Matthews, Missouri, this is fairly normal, but this is an increase here that's mixed in with it. So we've got a slight increase in Matthews. Matthews is a very active site. Now this is typical activity for Winburg, Tennessee. So I just thought those in Winburg would like to see this. 
And this is uh, a site that we don't go to very often. This is uh, the CUSEC office in Memphis, Tennessee. C-U-S-E-C. I'm not sure what it stands for. I haven't looked it up. But uh, there's daily tremor activity from the CUSEC office, CUSEC headquarters. Uh, this is the Gill campus in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, showing smaller tremors, but this is a daily occurrence. So there's a lot of activity in Memphis. Portageville, Missouri, very common to have these large signals. So this is a site that uh, we have fault shifts in, and they're significant. There's also a lot of small tremors throughout the page. That's normal for this site as well. Now, Monahans, Texas, had a lot of VLF waves going through it. Um, so this is from uh, from the 14th, and uh, it's picked up an activity through this period. Monahans does display a lot of fault shift activity, and it's doing it again. Top of the screen, this is uh, probably fault shift vibrations. That, that's what it looks to be. And then we've got fault shift tremors. So we've got all the activities of fault shift. We've got the vibrations, we've got the tremors, and we've got um, the VLF waves. And small earthquakes, very small earthquakes. And this is uh, the same site on hands on the 13th. So uh, just showing that this is a near daily activity, having this these VLF waves go through. Each one of these waves is uh, near two minutes in duration. So that's why it's very VLF, it's very low frequency. A two minute long wave, crustal wave, is very low frequency. And then we're going to get into some of the activity in the um, Cascade Range, um, but um, mainly in California. So we're going to um, do that on the next program. We're doing a series of three short programs today. Uh, we've got a huge amount of activity. Well, not huge. We've got a very significant activity in many, many sites around Yellowstone today. So um, I'm getting these uh, these short programs out of the out of the way, and then we're going to have a look at. Uh, all around Yellowstone, uh, Idaho, um, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to get into Utah at all, but uh, we're going to have a look at those three states and some um, Yellowstone seismograms as well. So we'll bring you that a little later today. Um, first, we're going to cover the Northern Cascades, and that's probably going to be about a 15-minute video. So... Um, Thanks for dropping by. I hope you've enjoyed this short review of the seismology um, of the earthquakes in Iran, primarily, southern Iran. A um, little more significant to have a 7.2 instead of the stated 6.2. A full magnitude down on, uh, on most of the 22 earthquakes that we know occurred there. And uh, at the same time, only reporting uh, 12 out of the 22. So they were, only, they were reporting 50% of the activity and under-reporting it by a factor of 10 times. So for every earthquake, earthquake basically was 10 times larger than what they reported. So there you have it. Um, we'll see you on the next program. I hope you've enjoyed this one. And... Uh, We'll see you there. Bye for now.